Is moderation a myth? Well, we're going to find out today. This is the final part in a three-part series with our former client, Steve Wilt, who's a financial services manager in Akram, Ohio, who's in his late 50s. And as I was saying in the previous two videos, this was recorded in Sedona, Arizona at our 2024 annual AFL Live retreat where Project 90 clients, Beyond 90 clients, and our leadership clients all come in for our annual get together. I hope you enjoyed part one and part two. This is part three where Steve talks about moderation being a myth for him. You'll also hear some Project 90 and Beyond 90 and leadership clients asking him questions where he does a little Q&A here. So enjoy this final part of the three-part Steve Wilt series. And I really wanna share this with those that are in Project 90 right now. Number one was moderation is a myth. Believe it to my core. Tried it twice, doesn't work. Moderation is a myth. So if you're thinking, and when I, when I say that, it's moderation is a myth if you got this far. I'm glad that I tried because now I never have to worry about it again. I know. I know it's a myth for me. I would have always wondered. So if you're thinking about it, just take my word and don't try and moderate. Uh, the game is rigged, All right? Glamorization, addiction, it's a poison, all the different things. I go to Whole Foods and I look at the fruit, fresh fruit, and right above it is those things they call mom waters, right? Pink seltzers designed right there for women to grab and take home as they're being, like, it's just crazy, it's rigged. You have to decide eventually, I'm gonna drink or I'm not, you just gotta make the decision. And then you do have to tell someone, because if you don't tell someone, you can always go back on it. You gotta face the past, but move on. I had 38 years of this. I wish I had done it when I was 21 like my son. I wish I had done it eight years earlier, but I, I can't change it, right? So I'm just gonna move on and keep getting younger. Um, we talk a lot about this in P90, knowing your purpose and your why. I hate that I modeled it for my kids. I hate it. But now I'm gonna break the generational addiction in my family. It's gonna stop here. You're not giving up on anything, you're gaining everything. You're not giving up on anything. Eventually you just don't. I play poker with my buddies. I see more now than when I was drinking. I was sharing with some of you yesterday that. And I see them more than before. No one cares, it's a big one. No one cares. And coaches taught us that. After the first round, after people say, you're not having one, after that they don't care. They move on to their own life. Have all the seltzer you want all night, with a soda with water, with lime. Nobody cares. Um, yeah, if you combine exercise and nutrition with being alcohol free, it is the fountain of youth. It all builds on itself. And then finally, it's important to keep your community after Project 90. I've got several Project 90 alums I stay in touch with. It's important to keep that community, to keep going, to have that accountability. I do want to take this opportunity to thank James, Victoria and Sarah. You've changed my life. You have changed my life in such a profound way and you've changed all our lives. So I can't thank you enough. Let's hear it for them. Any questions? <laughs> I can ask that as a question, as a statement. Yes. I have a question. Yeah. Um, how are you with your friend? Like, have you, my biggest struggle right now is I haven't met sober friends. Mm -hmm. So I'm still very much living my life. Yep. How are you with all that? Have you found sober friends or have you accepted that you're not going to stop drinking? I just have to do. So, uh, yeah, the question is if I found sober friends and I still lean on this community really hard to keep those sober friends. And I have found a few in my community, uh, but just a couple. Um, but I do find that I am hanging out more with those that drink less, not a lot. You know, the couples we used to go to dinner with where we would just get lit. We talked about it a little bit yesterday. I just don't enjoy it as much, right? I've also found most of my friends drink less around me. Yeah. 
And part of it's because, you know, one plus one was equaling eight. Right. Right. So <laughs> I'm not a ringleader. They're not a ringleader. All of a sudden it settles it, everything down a little bit, even my poker games and those kinds of things. Um, but yeah, you, you kind of sort that out. I haven't lost any friends, but there was a dinner or two early on where like first time at dinner with a couple that you go to a lot and you don't order a drink. My wife's like, what's going on? And you're like, oh, I don't drink anymore. And one of them said to her husband, well, you should do that. And I saw him look at me like, thanks, man. <laughs> right? I don't know if we've been to dinner with them since. They're still friends. <laughs> but there's a little bit of that. But it sorts itself out. And you also make new friends, you know. And, and again, those that are going to call you forward. So, yeah, as we talked about a little bit yesterday, it's hard to go to the big parties. It's just, I like to go early, chat with people while they're still cognizant, make my way around. And then when it seems to be too much, I just take off. Any other questions, please? I'm just curious about how you shared the journey with your kids, like that they, I don't know if they were in the home, but the kind of going mm. back and forth and um, yeah. drinking, not drinking, and then the information you have now and how that, I don't know if it influenced your son or that was separate, but just like how that worked with your kids. Um, my kids tell me they don't really remember me drinking that much. Like they remember a few things, you know, but I remember coming home under the influence and coming in the front door and they'd still be up. And I'm like, oh shit, they're still up. You know, like, um, but now when I first started down the journey, I shared it with them. And now we talk about it all the time. They know I'm here. They're excited for me to be here. Uh, my daughter, who's just got the singing gig is a bartender. And um, I worry about her a little bit, but she's, um, well, I worry about her a little bit. Um, so it's, it's an ongoing conversation, and they have both said they're proud of me. And my daughter, who's the apple in my eye, has said it many times, that she's proud of me, that she knows that it's the right thing for me to do. And they both quit vaping. They both caught up in vaping in high school. If you got young kids and you think they're not vaping, they are, man. It's such a, another one. But, but they both kicked an addiction. My son, too, and my daughter, one, right? So we talk about addiction and dopamine a lot in our family. And it's just a healthy conversation. It takes time, right? What else? Please. I think you're really on to something with um, leading companies to yeah. have their own. I had a situation in my company where um, I was really pressured to drink. And so I had a, a direct communication with our CEO and just said, hey, so you know, I stopped drinking. I don't want to make a big deal about it. Um, and he came back and because he didn't really drink either, and he said, "Yeah, I know it's it's terrible, and I'm trying to influence some of you know the C-suite not to drink as much, and I've given them a challenge." And so I told him about AFL, mm -hmm. and, you know, Huberman, and all these things, and he said that um, you know he was trying to figure out a way to kind of help yeah. the company, and so he, that was just our personal communication, mm -hmm. and then. What he did was send, I mean, a post on our, our intranet, an article about Silicon Valley going sober hmm. because we're a tech company, yeah, in the new tech company, and so that's all he did. And what was interesting is he got zero likes. <laughs> <laughs> he got nothing because everyone was, you know, their private wine collection. Hmm. You know, it was this really disgusting, you know, very right. Blatant, you know, alcohol fueled uh, company. So he, you know, he did his little thing. Yeah. But that's all he did. And then I was just, you know, I mean, it was really, I was trying to take a stand, but I had to just kind of back up. And, and there were a lot of people that, you know, would try and they tried to do things with their friends, but it was so lame and it just failed immediately. And then I just continued to take endless shit from them. So, <laughs> Sorry about that. So anyway, yeah. um, but there are weak attempts that mm -hmm. I make, and I, but I think there's such a groundswell in, yeah. in society now, and even the CEO said, yeah, my kids barely drink, his grown kids, my son barely, you know, I think that the 20, you know, 20 to 30 somethings mm -hmm. are saying, Ugh, I don't, I don't want to drink, they're the ones showing us DNAs. Yeah. So I think we need to help. Mm -hmm. 
you know, these these senior level managers, uh, which are all of us, right? Right. Mm-hmm. The group show the way. Really, yeah. Really. And, yeah. And this, I love what you did with you know get some dollar points, make it a mm-hmm. you know, like yep. game, make it one of the health challenges. Yeah. Right along with the fitness it. challenge. And you, as a great you know as a leader, saying, "Hey, it's cool. Yeah. I'm not going to be pressuring you." It's awesome. But Thank you. I, I think that's that's an amazing opportunity. Thank you. And a business opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. And, and, and I think what makes it work, again, is the, the dry January piece. 37% of people intend on doing dry January. Right. 19% do. 15% succeed. So out of 37% that intend on doing it, only 14% actually make it 30 days. Right. So if we're in a non-threatening way, say, hey, let's all do it together. It's just, yeah, it feels like it works, right? And it's not that, we're not asking not to drink in August, let's just do it during this dry January time. So thanks for the feedback, yeah. Any others before I know we have lunch here and it's time to break? All right, I am actually uh, boarding a plane in a couple hours. My son is uh, rowing in a crewing competition tomorrow. Uh, First one we're gonna get to go to, so I'm not gonna be able to stay tonight. Uh, but I will be around for a little bit. And it's just been great to know you all. I'm on the polos. You can track me down if you need help, if you want to talk, if you have ideas. I love when people reach out. So please do. Thank you. Thank you.